All right, so if you want to understand how I set up my .NET API intermediate to be able to hack the terminal chat in Windows Terminal to be able to use any API or model I want, that's what this video is going to be about. And I'll start out first by just talking about the architecture on a high level so things make sense as I drill into the details. So first up, we have terminal chat, which you can see right here. When a request goes in right now, I have it mapped to my .NET API, which you can think of as a proxy or an intermediate server. That .NET API then takes the request and reforms it and sends it off then to wherever I'd like. For example, I could send it off to Olama using the Olama API and hit the Llama 3 model. Or I could set it up to go to OpenAI's API. Or I could use grok.com. And then in terms of terminology, we've got terminal chat. It needs an endpoint. That endpoint is what points at my .NET API. So when I say endpoint, that's what I'm referring to. And then technically there's another endpoint I'm referring to this one as the back end. So that would be Olama, Grok, OpenAI. Any of those APIs, they're called back end to avoid confusion. All right. So if I come into terminal settings under terminal chat, I'll clear this out. All right. So I've got a source code repository here. It's called term chat Olama out on GitHub. And inside of there, I've got a file that has some examples for endpoints that you can use to configure terminal chat. For example, here's an endpoint I can use to configure terminal chat, if I paste this in here. Since no backend is specified, this is going to use Olama by default, asking for the code Llama model. And so the key doesn't matter. So I can just put whatever there, store that, close that, open up terminal chat. I'll just clear this out here. Show me big files. And there you go, I get back a response. I can even click on it, just like if I were using an Azure OpenAI service endpoint. So that's the cool thing here. So terminal chat makes a request. Let's go take a look at how that's transformed then and sent to a backend. So over in the source code repository, there's a program CS file. This has a slash answer endpoint. If you saw the endpoint in the notes, that's what I'm specifying right there, slash answer. So essentially terminal chat sends this request to this fake openaiazure.com endpoint at slash answer and on port 5000. So that's where my .NET API is running. I had to set that up with HTTPS. To do that, I'm using MookCert, and I've got the steps for that down below here. Basically, I generate a certificate file, self-signed, use that to secure this .NET API running on port 5000. That way, Windows Terminal Chat will actually accept that API, because if it's not a valid certificate, it won't. Oh, and by the way, I also had to edit my Etsy host file. That's down below here as well. To add an entry in with the IP address where the .NET API is running, in my case, I'm using a 192 address, but localhost will work as well if you're running it locally. And I'm basically mapping that IP address to be used whenever fake.openai.azure.com is requested. And so as far as terminal chat is concerned, it thinks it's talking to an Azure endpoint, when in fact it's not. It's talking to my .NET API. For that .NET API, I actually want to first start out by looking at this intercepted request that I used to build out this API. So here is a request that I intercepted and I intercepted this when I was using an Azure backend. That way I know what the request needs to look like and I know what the response needs to look like. And the top part here is the request that came from terminal chat. And then the bottom part here is the response that came back from the Azure endpoint. So now that I have this, I can build up a program to do the same thing, to take the request here, transform it, send it to a backend, get the response back from the backend, put it into the response format, and then terminal chat will be none the wiser. To do that then, if I close this, Go over to program CS. So the slash answer endpoint, all of this code basically takes in the request, parses out the messages, the history, if you will. If you look at your terminal chat, you have a history of back and forth, like you're asking questions and getting responses. All of that is sent then, so you have context, as well as the latest question, like if I put in test here. So in this case, the request is gonna have, show me big files, the original response to that, and then test. And of course the response then contains this right here. And the next message then will have both of those previous two conversations or back and forth. All right, so all of that winds up in chat messages. It then gets transformed into a format that the backend will understand. And all of the backends that I'm using are OpenAI API compliant, if you will. In other words, they use the same chat completions endpoint that OpenAI does, including Olama. So I build up a request that's compliant with that using OpenAI's client. I then ask for a completion here, passing the messages. I get back a response. I grab the completion text, which is whatever message that you want to see here in the history. So this is the response right here that I get back. 
So I send that then and I build up an Azure response using that format that I just showed you a minute ago. Essentially, if I come in here, I just inline that intercepted response and then I modify it and I put in the content of the answer that came from the back end. None of the rest of the parameters need to be adjusted. They can all be left exactly as is from that intercepted message. And then maybe one more thing that you might be interested in for some of the constraints about how I had to set this up. If you check out the source code for Microsoft Terminal, there's a feature branch for LLM. And inside of here, you'll find the implementation of Terminal Chat. For example, you can see a regex right here that requires that the domain name on the endpoint have openai.azure.com. Because of that, that's why I had to set up fake.openai.azure.com, modify my Etsy host file, and send requests there with a certificate that was also spoofed because I can't use a different domain name and I can't use HTTP either. I have to have HTTPS. And then inside of here, you can read through everything you'd like. There is one interesting section. That's a section with verification in it. So it performs some additional checks, like it checks that the model is an accepted model. And the only accepted model right now is GPT-3.5 Turbo. This is a model name that is specific to how Azure refers to models. And then there's also a requirement that the severity level on all of the sanity checks or safety checks are marked safe, which I believe also means high. So if I come back here, you can see more code down below where we check for the safe value here, the accepted severity level. So these are some of the constraints that I had to follow when it came to building up the request and the response to get this to actually work. And so you can look at the source code here. And I've bookmarked that link to that file out in my notes here in the repo, where at the top you can get a link to that particular file that I was just showing you with the source code for Terminal Chat. So yeah, this was really just a fun little exercise. It's one of those things that I knew I could pull off easily. So I didn't really need to do it, but it was pretty fun to set it up and follow through and try to work through the various constraints, put on the request from Terminal Chat and the response and actually get it up and running. It's a refreshing thing to do. It's fun. Plus now I can use whatever backend I want for Terminal Chat. That said, I'm sure soon enough they will modify the settings for Terminal Chat and the implementation so it could work with whatever backend you want. I'm sure that's coming soon enough. In the meantime, though, have at it. Grab this repository and see what you can do with this.